And here's the Gaunt's ghosts in their nice camo cloaks. Wait, let me change the background. There we go. Nice. So first step is to figure out what camo I actually want on the cloaks. Did a bunch of different swatches to figure out what I wanted. These are done with the Green Stuff World leaf stamper on some masking paper, but I ended up going with these urban shard kind of pattern. So I based them in Stonewall Gray, which is the lightest out of all the grays that I'm gonna use. That means that any step past this is gonna be easier to cover. And for this one, I'm gonna cut out slightly smaller shards than most of the other colors. I want different size shards on this to give it a nice mix. Here's some Tamiya masking paper that I'm using, and I'm gonna cut out a bunch of irregular polygons with a lot of sharp angles. Now we're gonna start applying these. I'm gonna use an X-Acto knife to place them. I'm gonna place them pretty far apart. I want a lot of space because I'm gonna end up doing four different colors on this and I want space for all of the colors so nothing's overpowering. Then I'm gonna grab a rubber brush, which is just basically a piece of rubber shaped like a brush on a stick. And these are really good for sculpting, but also to push in these masking papers into all of the different crevices and cracks. We're just gonna take our time and do each and every one of these dudes, getting the front of the cloak, the back of the cloak, and some on the hood. Once I'm happy with this masking step, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to Gravedigger Denim, one of my favorite P3 colors. So the real key to airbrushing over masking paper or masking tape is you wanna make sure you're going really light and really dry, like 90% air, 10% paint, go really slow, make sure your coats are dry as you're going through. You don't want to get anything to seep underneath and you don't want to build up a thick layer that's going to end up leaving an edge when the paper comes off. So now it's the next step of masking. The last set of masking paper we put on, we're going to leave that on there. That's going to be that stone gray. This next set is going to be for the Gravedigger denim. And we're going to step this over just a little bit further and we're going to get some bigger polygons. We're still going to stick with some sharp angles. And I'm just going to go down this paper and cut about the same thickness down the paper and just kind of play with different shapes. Another thing you can do is add a smaller shard inside of one of these bigger cutouts that you're doing and that will allow the next color you do to have a small piece within this color. Two things I'm trying to avoid is I don't want any of these shards to wrap around the cloak. I want there to be a separation between the pattern of the front and back of the cloak. And I also don't want any shards to travel into the hood area. I want there to be a separation between those two pieces of cloth. That brings us back to the airbrush booth for cold gray. Now again, I wanna make sure I'm dusting this on, but I also wanna make sure that all of my little pieces of paper are stuck down through this next process. I wanna make sure that the ones that I currently have on here and the ones that I've had on here before, because I'm actually gonna end up stacking all of these pieces of paper on top of each other as we go through all the colors. And that brings us to our last layer of masking paper. This one's gonna mask off your cold gray, and I wanna make sure that I'm leaving some space for the next color, and also kind of be aware of where the other masking paper is. So there's no problem laying some masking paper on top of it. That kind of makes it look like your cold gray shard is going under another color, which is good. But you also wanna make sure that you're not just setting it next to all your masking paper and just leaving like this weird border. You wanna have a good space between your masking paper or overlap it. On to the last color, Mechanicus Standard Gray. Now, again, we wanna dust this on, go nice and slow, really dry. This is the darkest gray out of all of these, so it's gonna coat over all of the other colors really nicely. You should only really be going over one color, but you get the picture. Right into our last step of, did I mess everything up and spend all this time on nothing, or did I actually make a cool camo pattern? So I sped this way up because there's just so much to do. There's so much paper to peel off on all of these. You wanna go slow. I'm using these tweezers. They're really nice like electronics tweezers that have a really sharp point, which does run the risk of chipping your paint and scratching it. If you do, you can always go back and repaint little bits and pieces, but if you can avoid that, it's better. And if you can get on top of the paper and peel it kind of into a wrinkle and then peel away, that typically is gonna be better because then the paper will protect your paint from the tweezers. Finish these guys up with pretty standard painting techniques. If you wanna see me do more of that, leave a comment and maybe I'll push to doing more of that kind of stuff. Gave him a bunch of tattoos being Gaunt's Ghosts. May have taken some inspiration on a few of those tattoos. 
And I hope this gives you some inspiration to paint up your own Gaunt's ghosts in a camo cloak that maybe isn't green. Thanks for watching.